<laughs> I was like, all right, hey, Siri, what's the score of the Bengals game? 7-6 at halftime. All right, I got to get to the car and get the radio on. Then my impression about the movie was, I was kind of like, eh, it was indifferent. What's the score of the Bengals game? 76 halftime. Hold up. Oh, my God. There it is, actual audio of uh, <laughs> Colonel leaving the theater. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> wow. My bad. Did, did your phone just react to you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you gave him the score of the Bengals game. A little bit a little bit of a delay, wouldn't you say? A little bit. <laughs> good Lord. Oh, man. If you want to become a member, check out our website at deathcursesociety.com, then click on the membership tab. You can join for the price of a cup of coffee once a month. Thanks to our final girls and guys, Christy, c Phase, Lorena, BD, Alex, and Robert. Our Crazy Ralphs, Bell's Fancy Creations, Dr. Smiley, Raymond, and the whole damn enchilada pod. And of course, our camp counselors... Adam, Corey, Christy, Luke, Jimmy and Rachel, Stacy, Lynn, Orlando, Chuck, Schick, Dave, Patricia, Kristen, and JJ. I got a question for all of you guys to start off this. Did you watch the first one before going to the second? Uh, Colonel. <laughs> no. Ziggy. I did, but I was working on something at the same time. So Sorry. I was... In and out, you know. 50-50 watching. Phase. I watched it last night while drunk. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I got it, though. All right. Uh, okay. Well, uh, I, wanted, I wanted to ask that because I wanted to bring up a couple of things about the first one before we jump into the second one. And not necessarily about the story of the first one. One of the things that made Smile 1 jump out in 2022 hey it was i think it was still one of the better movies of that year uh i think it was if not on all, all of our list it was close but uh the marketing campaign was fucking brilliant yes yeah. um i mean not only did they have like one of the better scares in the movie or effects in the movie in the trailer with that girl walking up to the car and then her head coming upside down into the window. Th that trailer, that bit in the trailer alone made everyone want to go see that. Secondly, the the viral stuff they were doing on the side, the little gorilla shit, having the, the smiling girl behind home plate at baseball games and everything. Division fucking, yeah, the Division series and shit. It's like, Ooh, yeah, man. Fucking genius. Now, what stood out to you about the marketing of this movie, Smile 2? Ziggy. I uh, just, I took note that we are with a Lady Gaga type artist. <laughs> that's a big giant artist. And it, that's, to me, that was interesting. So I went, okay. But there's nothing that made you go like, oh yeah, can't wait for this. Right. How about you, Colonel? Marketing? Dude, marketing is such a letdown compared to the first one. I mean, I really just remember seeing trailers. That's it. Yeah. A lot of the same trailer. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And that was and phase same. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, right. that, that was my point. Where was the clever? I, now maybe you couldn't get away with having the same, you know, the smiling people in the crowd at a sporting event. Maybe you couldn't get away with that. I again. disagree with this, with th what this is. That's absolutely appropriate. Here we go again. I think you could have like arranged with some concerts and done it at concerts. Dude, you know, what would have been awesome if they had the smiling people standing there in the crowd at fucking like good morning America. Just like they did. Didn't they last I year? Think at one point they did last year. Yeah, did I think that. they did last year. Oh, did they? Like I the, the one, the one that has the windows behind them. 
Yeah. With all the people, you know, holding up the signs, Atlanta loves you. Well, that shit. Well, you got to remember, man. I'm fucking. I've been at work for three hours by the time that shit hits the air. I don't know. Well, I, I don't watch it, but I think I remember seeing some pictures or video from that a couple years ago. So I think they did that. Okay. But no, since this was a musical bent angle to this story, I thought it would have been cool if they would have had them like showing up at concerts and like, you know, you would have gotten viral clips at like. I'm just throwing this out there because it's the person that came into my head, but like at a Taylor Swift show, like, you know, her looking at the crowd and going, are you okay? And then the camera, like throwing it up on the big screen behind her. And it's just a smiling girl or whatever. I think that that was the way they needed to go and they could have made it happen, but they didn't do it. And you would have seen those clips all over TikTok and Instagram and blah, 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 whatever, you know, all the other social media that we don't know how to use. Um, <laughs> it's true it's true we barely know how to use the social media we're on that's true uh, mm-hmm. oh, do it. Oh. Uh, but uh, yeah so I think they missed a huge opportunity with the marketing because like you guys one of you said it was the same trailer over and over um, for six months we saw this trailer in the theater. Every time we went to a movie, it was in there. And it got, it got a little old, honestly. Kind of lowered my expectations. Would you agree, uh, Colonel? Oh, of course. I, I mean, there's so much hype around the first one. I didn't... Fuck, I don't even think I've seen the first one in the theaters. Like, I waited until it hit streaming. Did you really? I think so, because I don't think we covered it. We didn't review it, but we talked about it, like, in our top ten, I believe. Yeah, well, at that point, I'd already seen it, but, like... right. No, like I said, it, it hurt because like I said, it's just had the hype for Terrifier 3 the week before. Mm. I knew Smile 2 was coming out, but like you, I was kind of like, eh. I mean, you guys seen it. I posted it. I was like, this better be good. And I'm missing the fucking Bengals game. <laughs> Synopsis is about to embark on a world tour. Global pop sensation Sky Riley begins experiencing increasingly terrifying and inexplicable events. Overwhelmed by the escalating horrors and the pleasures of fame, Sky is forced to face her past. Man, they put in a bunch of like fifty cent words into that into that synopsis, which are it, yeah kind of hard, kind of easy to trip over. So, um, Ziggy, first impressions leaving the theater. I, again, I was just going like that motherfucker, man. Call, you know, that's the first thing I thought, you know, but um, you know, I wasn't overly impressed with this movie, like coming out of it. I was kind of just, uh, eh, eh, you know, meh, give it a meh. And then it's thought, but the future for the franchise could very well be bright if, if this matters, this ending. So, which we'll get to again. But uh, so I, again, there's hope for it. But uh, this time around, I, I don't think I was as impressed as I was with the first one. What impressed you so much with the first one? Do you remember? Uh, the originality. Of it. it was just very yeah. original, uh, a, a neat concept um, that honestly, I don't think it is anymore after watching this movie. But I mean, um, at the time, it was. It was okay. original. It was something new, something original. And uh, I was digging it. Same same question to you, Colonel. What what made the first one special, and uh, what were your first impressions walking out of the theater on this one? <sighs> what made the first one special? I just thought, while I didn't think it was a fresh new concept, because we've seen stories like this, but from other movies, um, and it follows gets brought up quite a bit. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it, again, still new. We've been making movies for a hundred years. You're not going to have an original idea, so right. I don't really hold that against Smile One. Um. But it did feel fresh to an extent. And the story was entertaining enough to keep me hooked in. You know, I wanted to follow along, see how this was the story was going to end. Um the first thought after the theater was like, oh, I'm gonna strangle these fucking kids. Um the audience? <laughs> the audience. Huge okay, yeah. Th- one of the bigger theater theaters as my movie theater. Tell me why these fuckers decided to sit three rows down from me, six of them. The only ones in the theater talking loud as shit, taking selfies during the fucking movie, flashing and all this shit. Oh, man. 
<laughs> saying fuck as loud as I can. Every, I thought I said fuck a lot. No, I, forgot that. <laughs> I forgot I was a teenager once upon a time and said fuck even more than I normally do. Because that's every other word they said. So I was like, I'm going to strangle these fucking kids. And they say they were. Yes. And that's also how I know I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> multiple things are confirming I'm getting old this week. Did, did uh, you tell them? Did you tell them to get off your lawn? <laughs> no, no. I was. I kept giving them the, the dad look, and they shut up for a little bit. I'll be like, and Wait sorry, a minute, sir. That's they behind you? Normal. I'm like fuck. They just called me sir. No, they were they behind they were, you or in front of you. No, they were like next to me, like literally two seats over. The whole fucking theater was empty. Uh, I was the only one who bought a ticket when I went. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to sit where I never get a cent. Sit very back row, dead center. Boom. Ain't no one coming into a 1220 fucking showing a smile, too. No, these six fucking little assholes ain't nothing better to do either. God damn. So pissed off at them. <laughs> I was like, all right. Hey, Siri, what's the score of the Bengals game? 7 6 at halftime. All right, I got to get to the car and get the radio on. Then my impression about the movie was I was kind of like, eh, it was indifferent. Huh. Uh, All right. <clears throat> but to his uh, movie compadres. What's the score of the Bengals game? 76 halftime. Oh my God. <laughs> there it is. Actual audio of uh, Colonel <laughs> leaving the theater. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> wow. My bad. Did, did your phone just react to you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it gave him the score of the Bengals game. A little bit, a little bit of a delay, wouldn't you say? A little bit. <laughs> good Lord. Oh, man. Siri, uh, yeah. uh, Colonel, let me before I move on to Faye's about yep. the actual movie. Are, are you one to like rat out loud people in a theater? My mama didn't raise no snitch. No, now if it was a full theater, I probably would have. But dude, it was me and them. Like, who else is going to rat them out? <laughs> True. You know, I wouldn't have been Good able point. to assist myself. I'd be like, "Hey, you motherfuckers, need to shut the fuck up." <laughs> dude, <laughs> we were all kids. Hands on them. We were all kids once. Uh, I know. I expected it. But I'm working, God damn it! I'm coming to see a movie I got to talk about on Monday. Don't need they you don't guys. Care. I'm going to be bitching about you in my podcast. Yep, that's they right. They don't care. No, I know. They're kids, man. They I already know. told you. When I go to my theater, it's usually a mixed bag of people, and it's usually extremely entertaining. So I don't care. I don't. I don't rat on anybody. All right. Faze, what about you? Uh, what made the first one unique or special <laughs> for you? And uh, what were your first impressions walking out? I actually never watched the first one last year. I uh, accidentally walked into it when I was going to watch Halloween last year, and I kind of snuck out and then went back to the movie I intended to watch. So I never watched Smile. And But I watched it last night, you know, drunk, but, you know, I caught it, you know, as much of it as I could. So, you know, enough of it so I could go into Smile too, knowing what I'm getting into. And I don't know. I thought the original was okay you know it, it was all right nothing special coming out of the theater for smile too i really hope i'm not alone in this statement but uh i kind of liked it actually i enjoyed this film i i really hope it cranks with me on this because either that or i'm alone in that opinion because i genuinely enjoyed this movie hmm. that's all hmm interesting um crank <laughs> <laughs> well I'll, I'll say this um <clears throat> like these guys have said it wasn't necessarily a wholly original idea the first movie but it had a fresh take on it i liked how they in you know kind of infused it with that mental illness take on it where uh it almost gave a purpose for some people, at least, to be going through a mental illness or a breakdown or being delusional. And it kind of gave a demonic tale behind it. And I kind of liked the way they were, you know, connecting those worlds in a way. Um, so that helped me with the first one. The second one, I... I didn't know exactly how they were going to raise the stakes, but they absolutely did, I think, with this one. And I, 
I enjoyed it as well. I, I I don't think it's as good as the first one, but I think it's I think it's a pretty solid film. But it absolutely helps to have watched the first one very soon before going back and seeing the second one. Um, well, I caught the nods and the the there's a, there's one very significant mention that's in there that is important. I think there's a couple. Sure. Yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah, that one was like, oh, okay, that's but. right. Well, and the, I mean, the movie starts right. Let's get into this. The movie starts right, basically at the end of the first one. Pretty almost. much, you know. I mean, there's a little bit of a gap, maybe a day or two, <clears throat> but Kyle Gallner returns, who is in uh, one of the best movies of the year so far, uh, Strange Darling. Um, but he, he, his character comes back in Smile 2, Joel. But that first scene, it, it, it gets you into it, I thought. It, it brings you back in and then kind of sucker punches you in a, in a good way. Uh, who, wants, who wants to talk about the opening? Ziggy, you'll start on this one. Uh, yeah, man, it's cool. I mean, uh, she... Uh, let's see. I don't want to go too far ahead with it. I mean, you want to be just well. She's the Kyle Goner scene. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, they, they they before that they kind of set her up, and you kind of see her right. daily day duties as a as a diva and everything. So right. you know, you get that whole all her assistants and everything, and before all on, all that bullshit. Yeah, huh? Yeah. It's not about the opening, like the uh... right, 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 right. When she uh... oh, when he, uh... oh, right, 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 right. Like before that, well, what the, the scene was... where he's trying to pass off the curse. Oh, God, yes. Because, no, no. okay, yeah. well, if oh, you haven't seen uh, the first one, folks, uh, spoiler alert. Yeah, right away. Uh, if you haven't seen the first one, at least, the ending is not a very happy ending. No. Uh, it's a pretty dark ending. And Kyle Gallner is now, we assume, stuck with the curse. Uh, Joel. So well, it clear. starts with him trying to get rid of it. And he has a theory because the character in the first one, uh, Rose, I think, something like that. Yeah. Uh, she kind of figured out a way to get out of it and told him. So he's trying to get rid of it. Go ahead, Ziggy. Fine. Right. So he, he figures out he gets a couple of bad people and he's going to pass it off on them. Uh, but <clears throat> he fucks it up. And you know he's he's got to kill someone's got to watch somebody die to see to get the curse onto them, and uh, he it's like two brothers, right? So he he shoots the one who incapacitated him, but he fucking kills him, right? Too, and so now he's stuck with it, and uh, he apologizes to. Uh, oh man, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit like fucking flipped out today so yeah. uh yeah to the kid there what was the kid about there the uh the kid was just using the bathroom while he went yeah. in there guns blazing so kind of like into this shootout and shit and kind of like death. marvin and pulp fiction like he, he wasn't yeah. supposed to be there and uh he he just he bails out and goes running out of the house and gets fucking smoked by a fucking <laughs> car, man. And it's like one of the most vicious grinding car. Like the just they kept on the gas pressed apparently the whole time until this guy was hamburger. There's nothing left. But uh it's impressive the shot. The shot's a very good shot. And this is the difference with smile to smile too is uh they got a huge, huge budget for this and oh, okay, production yeah. and a team and so they used it. They used the resources for this. The special effects were definitely up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I will say that much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah because yeah, yeah. they upped they upped the gore in this one. Now, granted, mostly CGI. I'm aware. What? For this. I see Kurt being like, God damn it. Yeah. I see <laughs> that I see that look. Mm-hmm. Sure um, did. Uh yeah. yes. but that ending of that opening scene though. Yes. With the blood streak on the, yeah, got, on well, the ground forming the smile. And there's, mm -hmm. there's, 
here's some fucking leg meat, here's some arm meat, here's torso, here's some intestine. It's just, it keeps going until you get to the crash, and then there's like a nice pile of just red beef there, just all yeah. dripping out. And I mean, it was like a full body of blood trail smeared out into the concrete. It's pretty wild. And then uh, Commissioner Gordon and Batman show up because I'm sorry, every time I've seen this poster and even seen this, I'm like, is this the Joker? <laughs> like, am I watching right. a Batman movie? Because right. I've seen this before. But, sure. I, I got to point this out real quick. Just just says Zag is making me hungry after he's talked about like entrap body parts and insides and I shit. I said hamburger <laughs> twice too, though. I mean, oh, you know, did just... say hamburger. <laughs> Go get a burger, Patricia. You'll be fine. <laughs> yes. Uh, we'll be here yeah, when you get back. That was great. I thought that was effective uh, and <clears throat> pretty much, much like Terrifier Three, taking you right to the moment when the other one was ending, mm -hmm. or at least. Again, he he figured out what he had to do to lose it, and then he just he fucked it up. He could have ended it right there, and everything would have been good. We all go home in ten minutes, and it's fine. But no, he fucked it up and got himself hamburgered and turned into a fucking casserole. So I mean, that's that's how that is, and it goes to the credits, and then we kind of jump to our our diva, her story. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Colonel, that opening scene was that effective for you? Oh, of course, I mean it definitely pulled you in. Um, my Zag kind of chewed on that. There's not much else to say. <laughs> Fair enough. I will add, and you kind of alluded to it, and it, it's throughout the whole movie, but I do like the way Parker Finn directs a movie. Or it, it, maybe maybe it's the cinematographer. W one of the two. They, because... have, they, they take chances with the shots. They take a lot of neat original shots. No question. This guy's an artist. I can't, I won't even deny him that. There are some very artistic shots, and one of them is right there at the beginning. And even rewatching Smile One, the first one is pretty, uh, it, it's not as ambitious, but the fact that it follows him, that entire opening sequence is pretty much just following him all the way through that house. I mean, there are cuts but they're hard to see. Um, and it's a lot of, you know, turning the camera from one side of the room to the other and, and following like, like people's points of view. There's a lot of that in this. And a lot of filmmakers fuck that up quickly and badly. But I like the way this guy films that because after it follows Joel out the door, and he gets smoked. I had I ate some more Skyline today, so I'm a little bit, a little bit gassy up here. He's Sorry, verklempt. I'm a little bit clint. Oh, for dinner too. Nice. Uh, but as it follows him out the door and across the road, and he gets smoked, and then it like, kind of follows up and over. It does that overhead shot, and then does that tall overhead shot, and it's beautifully done, man. Uh, I mean, if that was an actual crane shot, which I don't know, I would assume a lot of it is now done with like drones and such. Uh, especially, I think he, yeah, because he jumped out a window. So, and it followed him through the window. So it probably was just a drone. Mm -hmm. But holy shit, if you can fly a drone like that, you got a job for the next several years in uh, filmmaking, my friend, because... Yeah. That was an impressive shot. And yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I was saying, it definitely right with the drone shot in uh, the resort. That was a beautiful drone shot. Okay. I thought shot. I thought you were going to be serious for a minute, Dick. <laughs> no. no. It was a beautiful shot, though. No. Nah. Um, I just want to see your face every time I say the resort. Oh, God. Ugh. Smell my ass. <laughs> yeah. uh, it looks like somebody talked to you. Talked uh, or answered your question, Amber. Thanks for tuning in. Have we talked about the ending yet? Don't want to spoil anything. Just got here. Nope. Oh, no ending yet? We're still we're still in the opening shot or opening yeah. scene, basically. Yeah, pretty much. We drag these out, so go get a burger and come back. <laughs> come back in an hour. We might be talking about the ending. Well, actually, I'm stay kidding. for the hour, and you can I'm join kidding. us in the conversation when we speak about the ending. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the burger thing was a joke from earlier. Sorry. Um, Anyway, okay. yeah. Uh, how about Naomi Scott as Sky Riley? Um, I'm going to start with Faze on this since he kind of liked this film. Sounds like maybe more than you two. I don't know yet. Uh, what'd you think of her character? Faze. I would say so. Just 
real quick about the previous scene. I really like the whole oh, yeah. snowy like aspect. Yeah. It just that was very homey for me. And anytime there's snow in a film. But anyway. Yeah, Naomi was really good. Well, we learned that she's got a bit of a addiction. She's recovering. She's recovering. Right. That's true. Yeah, it starts with an interview. A car accident. Well, we hear about a car accident. Right. We, you know, On the Drew Barrymore show. Yes. yes. Which is, I, don't know I need I cameo. Yeah, I guess. You yeah. know. I don't know. I'm, I'll be honest. I'm not a huge fan of Drew's talk show. That was weird. Yeah. The the bit the bits that I've seen. I, I've never watched an entire episode or anything. But the, Is the it an actual show seen. that they yeah, yeah. an actual talk okay. Show. I thought it was a made up. I don't watch those fucking things, man. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Ziggy, talk about Naomi and and her character, Sky, and the acting and all that stuff. Right. Right. I mean, they kind of on the Drew Barrymore show. They allude to the fact that she survived this horrible accident and broke her leg and. Uh, and she's coming back, and, and she's changed her hairstyle, and this is the tour. She's the comeback tour, you know. So, mm -hmm. and uh, but she's you, you start to get a hint that she's got and it's some issues, you know. And uh, right away, you know, I mean, her mom's there as one of her assistants, and she has a couple of other assistants running around. But I mean, they don't really trust her yet i guess you know but mm -hmm. and, and it seems like they're pushing her along before she's ready to go you know she probably could use another six months of rest before right. getting to this fucking tour but oh no there's money to be made so you uh, made the comparison that this was a lady gaga-esque uh pop star so maybe not lady gaga but more britney spears Maybe not as Britney Maybe. Spears or uh, what's the other one? Uh, the rehab one. Uh, it got to be a little more specific. Man. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, what's her song? Rehab. Her song was Rehab. Oh, she, Amy Winehouse? Amy Winehouse, exactly. Okay. Uh, that, that almost fits a little bit better, I think, but not to the degree of death. You know what I mean? Where she's going to just keep partying or Janis Joplin herself and stuff. It's not like that. And Britney Spears, I, she's not, I think. She's a little more together than Britney Spears. She just is dealing with a fucking thing now. And mm -hmm. and and she's good. I, I think she's really good. She's one of the bright spots for me for this movie. She is actually good enough to carry this thing. And uh I I I was with her on the journey, man. And that that's that's cool when they can do that for you. Naomi absolutely fucking nailed it, dude. Um, got anything she just sucked me in to the story of the scene. Um, fuck, dude, like I said, she I'll go more in depth at the very, very end. Um, but I'll be honest, I, I don't think if she wasn't the star of this movie, I don't know how much I would have actually liked this movie. I'll just say that she was fucking phenomenal, dude. Yeah, phenomenal, and yeah. that had to be such a fun role to play. Like, I know she probably had a blast playing that fucking character. I would imagine it's a fun role, but also she's in damn near every frame of mm -hmm. the fucking movie. And it's a two hour and seven minute movie. So that's a, good point. That's a lot of frames. Minus yeah. that opening scene of five minutes or whatever. The rest of it. So. It's her man and her day off. Killed it. And she nails it. Yeah, I agree. But. Man, that's got to be a burden, you know? It's maybe not while you're filming it, but after you're done filming and then being like, oh, shit, I physically have to carry this movie. And I think she did. I think she oh, yeah. handled it very well. So We've all said it before. Yeah. There's some roles that are just too much. They're just too heavy for some characters. They can't carry it. Mm -hmm. uh, that wasn't the case here. What about the uh, supporting cast in this? The mom? The uh, the assistant, um, I Everybody thought those stood two stood out, but they were good. I thought uh, I maybe they didn't stand out, but they were they were perfect stereotypes of those roles, mm -hmm. especially and, the and, mom. Yes, and they and I thought they handled it very very well. So I was going to say the exact same thing. 
No, well, there you go. Well, uh, Ziggy, what do you got to say? <laughs> I think they were exact. They were stereotypes of exactly what you, you know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it's true though. I mean, he's what he said is, you would picture that the overbearing mom. You know, even though daughter is, you know, well into her twenties and handling things, not uh, well. Not well. Uh, <laughs> she was doing better before the accident, and then you know. Knowing what we know about the curse of the smile and everything, so mm. uh, that's you have to see somebody die for, to be cursed. So, uh, but you normally have to see somebody commit suicide yes. to get cursed. So, yeah. and that's sticky that's when, when we get to that actual part. But I mean, and that's something that I mean where I was kind of like. All right. All right. Well, yeah. let's. Yeah, okay, let's talk about that scene. She goes to see her friend. Uh, well, fuck me, right? Uh, yeah. Fuck you, Colonel. <laughs> no, no, all right. Now, wh what do you think of the mom and the the assistant? No, I, I agree with you guys. They did just fine. I'm going to throw another character in there. Um, her friend Gemma. Hmm. Okay. She's fucking horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, horrendous? Her acting was fucking pitiful. It I mean, was too nonchalant, if that makes sense. Hmm. Like, to it me, it was almost I, pretentious. It was so nonchalant. But, I remember. I, man, that's kind of what I liked about it because uh, keep in mind how she got dragged back in, too. Well, that and makes I, a little more sense once that's revealed. And also keep in mind what that is. So. No, but still at the same time, man. Like, it's like you got these great characters playing these roles perfectly and then it's just uh like it just felt phoned the fuck in hmm. but it, i'm sure it was done on purpose but is that did kind of take me out of the movie a little bit i absolutely think it was done on purpose because i mean that dude i, I keep in mind Gemma, you know in the story at least was shunned was basically told to go fuck herself yep and, and then she worked. starts yeah. she, she starts getting the phone call you know a year later, and you know, oh, oh, hey, like acting like, oh, not much has happened over the last year. I just wanted to talk to you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, bullshit. What do you, you know, what would you do? You'd, you'd pick up the phone and be like, what do you want, bitch? Yeah, you and know? I wouldn't show up or offer to spend the night or any of that other bull. It just, it, again, as like I said, the acting just felt really phoned in. Uh, it sure is on purpose. It just, come on, man. I've seen better acting than fan films, especially as uh, new Billy Chapter mm -hmm. 2. So. <laughs> when well, it comes that, to that character that I'll agree with but um, I, I think a lot of that was kind of intentional so uh, I like the nonchalantness of it I mean because it was it it was that kind of character that was just like look I'm going to go along with you but I'm kind of keeping you at arm's length and it paid yeah. off later so, I guess I mean if I was pissed off with somebody and wanted to keep them at arm's length I wouldn't suggest I'll sleep over to make you feel better Again, more is revealed later in the movie, which we shall not talk about right now. But which I made what you a mean. little bit more sense. It still was terrible acting. Sorry. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah. I just who who uh, who agrees with Colonel and who disagrees? He, he's he, make me want to rewatch it. Okay, like and see, you know, because I I currently disagree. I'm more on your side, but it's you know he. I'm curious now. I want to look at that again. Eh, I, I don't I don't necessarily agree with that. I, I that's fine. I don't, I don't need anybody to agree with me, man. Yeah, I, I don't give a shit. It was an arm's length thing, and you know, she was even like, okay, she didn't know what she was gonna be walking into after being told to go fuck herself. So I mean mm -hmm. I, I get it, but it, I, I know what you're saying. Her character, her va almost valley girl esque kind of delivery. That's what was kind of annoying, you know. But I think it kind of pays off later on it with does. the whole with the whole Ride or die, bitch. I thought, mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I thought there was a moment there where it was just kind of like, all right, all even, right. Even that fell flat. I'm sorry. Even that moment there, ride or die. And she's like, ride or die, bitch. I don't like, think she you was. You hate me. Mm -hmm. This is your best friend. Show mm -hmm. some fucking emotion. It was awful, man. It was, I, ugh. Let me go back to uh, one of your, one of Amber's comments back here then since she saw it. 
She says, maybe you'll agree acting overall, especially with Naomi, was well done. I do agree, even with Gemma. Uh, you're right, Amber. Besides Colonel, you're right. Uh, <laughs> but she uh, she says, Continue. but the story could have been a little better. Mm. I really like the movie, but as a fan of great stories, I do have questions. Well, Amber, I'm, we always have questions. Yeah, and nice you're right. Take. Nice. You're, you're, take. Yeah, you're you're about spot on. I will I will say. I'm right um, with you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you kind of mentioned it. You, well, you mentioned like the the day to day stuff. I like how they kept building up the day to day stuff of Sky's life oh, as yeah. the days went on. Oh, yeah. Shit. And you know, children going right, yeah. going to the rehearsal, going to the meet and greets, going to you know. Uh, and her mom going over the schedule with her. Like, you better right. go to bed early because you got all this shit to do tomorrow. Right. Uh, that wasn't bad. And then to add on some kind of demonic entity going on, do we uh, We got to talk about the Lewis the Lewis scene. Where yeah, she gets where, she goes that, where she gets cursed. Yeah. Uh, I'll let Colonel start with this one. Colonel, you want to walk Lewis us through what you liked character. about that scene? Yeah, the Lewis is one of my favorite characters of the fucking movie. I mean... <laughs> Interesting. Just because he is drugged out of his fucking mind and still tear like I I never done cocaine, but I imagine if you're seeing what you're seeing, Coke is probably the last thing you should be doing. Yeah. Uh, so you yeah. know, she shows up trying to get her Vicodin. Um, you know, just this the only drug she's still using, because uh, they won't prescribe her anything heavier than you know, heavier than Tylenol. She tried to set that up. Um, so he's like who texts you like just f flipping the fuck out? She's like, you text me. And he's like, oh, okay. D you know, and then. Holding the sword to her throat. Yeah, literally. A fucking she's like, I don't remember. Mom. I don't remember doing it. I don't remember. Because he's. He's <laughs> like, out of his fucking, fucking sword. Fucking flea market. 50 bucks. Like right up on a fucking juggler. I think it's probably dull as shit anyway. Uh, you know, he kind of settles down. He does a few lines. She's, he, what, what do you need? I got this. She's like, look, I just need Viking and I'm out of here. So he goes to presumably get into a stash, get her her fix. Uh, she's just chilling. Fine. He shows up. Next thing you know, he's staring at the wall. Dies, essentially. Spoiler alert, we're getting there. But then probably one of the... Probably the it's in the, tra it's in the trailer. In the trailer. Yeah, okay. Uh, then the second best gore, gore scene in the movie, even though it is like, I'm pretty sure, at least 80% CGI. But there was some practical in there, you can tell. I think that flop was, yeah. uh, that, oh, was yeah. that was practical. Yeah, that was practical. It continues yeah, the to was fucking definitely. face in with a 35-pound weight. Um, again, and this is following the introduction scene. So, I mean, this movie got you by the balls pretty much from the start. That first act, it really doesn't let up because you can also feel, you know, the stress of her daily life and everything, too, on top of this fucking chaos. Like I said, it was a great fucking scene. I'll just wrap it up on that because I think, I, like Ziggy on the first part, I think I chewed enough of this one up. Well, then mm -hmm. she, like, you know, she's about to grab the phone and call 911, but then, you know, there's a scar face pile of cocaine on a fucking mirror, and, you know, she's just like, shit. And she, and she throws up at the yeah, crime oh, scene. That's right. She so. works in the corner, right. And, uh, you know, so she's, she realizes she can't. So she just fucking jets out of there, man. It's like the Fred Flintstone style with the... <laughs> yep, out she goes. Smoke. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> just, just the dust of her silhouette. <laughs> yep. Uh, no, that was a good scene. And... I, I agree with you. That was a very good combination, practical and CGI gore scene. I I, I thought it looked pretty damn good. Uh, I'm not going to get too much more into it because I want you guys to see it. Uh, Faye, is anything to add on that scene? Uh, no, I really liked it too. And it, again, just, they captured a drug dealer, a, a crazy drug dealer's apartment really well. It looked fucking just read it up, just, just destroyed, old, just dusty, fucking shit everywhere. Just, it was perfect. Neon sign on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
Now, I, mean, I don't know about you guys. I did appreciate the exposed brick. I was like, that's nice. <laughs> so. I, I don't think I've ever, well, I don't think I've ever knowingly been over to a drug dealer's house. So I, I, I don't know. Fair enough. Just this particular, just it, it was, it was spot on. Yeah. The only thing he was missing was an iguana, but I think he had fish instead. <laughs> he did, he did yeah, have fish. Right. He did, he have, did fish. have fish. <laughs> you're some right, though. Fucking iguana, or some kind of lizard. <laughs> now, oh. uh, keep in mind, uh, if you, again, uh, this is about mile one, so a yeah. spoiler for that, I guess. But uh, keep in mind, the demon attaches to the person who witnesses the demon killing the other person. Now, you don't see the demon killing them. They just kill themselves. That's how the demon attaches to the next person. So, And it looks like Ziggy has an issue with that. That's what I'm saying. This is where I'm like going, okay, I understand that some movies are just are not for everybody. <clears throat> and... uh this concept without a pretty good backstory on the demon is fucking stupid to me. I'm sorry. So, I mean, I, it's a demon attack getting in a person. You can leave it at that. And that's, that's pretty much all, you know, anyway, we don't know why it's here or, or what the purpose is or why it has to go through the channels. It does to stay uh, infecting people like that. So I don't think we need, I don't think we need much. Well, I don't, I don't think we need to know I, much I, I about just, the actual demon. Listen, it, it's for me, and I'm sure I'm I'm gonna definitely be a minority on this review. I already know that, so yeah. yeah. I mean, I I don't necessarily need to know much more about the demon. I mean, I'm sure they're going to. I have a feeling there's going to be a third part, so we'll probably well, learn more. I I was into it more until you could see it. How about that? <laughs> uh, you saw it in the first one. I don't know. This we're not you, seeing the first introductions the always. You get that first one, right? And that's, but I, I don't know. It didn't look. You saw it in the first one. I I know, but See, now, now this is where not seeing the first one in two years probably hurt this movie for me. Because I'm kind of with Zag when I first saw it. I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. <laughs> not it, not it, the design, just the fact that it was just really shitty CGI. They spent more time on it this time around. Or they put money think, this time. Well, they had more money, but they spent more time on it this time around. And I think the original was a lot more practical. Um, That's what I'm trying to say. And um, what, if, if you have that kind of fucking money, what the fuck are you doing, man? I was going to say, you got that money, and that's the best you can do. What the fuck, well, dude? Now, half, we oh God, we, we, we're, we're getting too far ahead. I was going to say half of it was cool. But the other half, I'm with Zag on that. But I don't want to get too far because now we're talking about the ending and we're still in Act 1, essentially. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, who wants to go next? Go go with some more of the story real quick. Who, uh, Ziggy. Um, right. So she uh, gets back to her place and, you know, <laughs> tries to ease back into her life. But now she's starting to see things by the corner of her eye in the mirrors. You know, there's the one in the in the trailer where the, the very guy that smashed his face is behind her, and her face is in front of his. But he's clearly there, and she, they're doing one of these. You know, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it does that quick cut, and it's her making her smile. You know, so and it's it's an illusion. It's just in her mind. Uh, so so you get this now. She's trying, to, and then she's getting a text. From an unknown number saying, were you at so-and-so's apartment the other night? You know, and she's just like, shit, 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 fuck, fuck, shit, shit, shit. You know, panic. And, you know, I think everyone's kind of felt that panic at some point, getting mm -hmm. something you had to deal with. <clears throat> but, so, okay. You know, so that's that's kind of cool. So we don't know who's texting her. She's still trying to balance her career. She's still getting ready for this tour. Now she's it just keeps piling on her. Everything's piling on this person. And she's fucking cursed by a demon. So are we going to get to another plot point? Like, uh, what's the next big plot point? I guess meeting the, the phone caller, the texter. Yeah. yeah we've, got, we've got that. And we've got the uh, what actually happened in the, the accident that 
got her to where she was. She starts having visions, like vivid, vivid nightmares and visions of being back in that car when the accident takes place. And they start showing a little bit more of what transpired and what caused it. Um, and until the end, you get the whole thing and, and why it is this way. And I think that's, you know, what brought her trauma to begin with and made her a candidate. I think I think these people all have to be weak in some way, weakened in some way, hurt in some way, uh, deficient in some way to for this demon to get you. Well, I think that I think you mentioned it. I think they have to have some kind of trauma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Um, I mean, she has the trauma of, you know, the car accident and possibly ending her career, you know. Along yeah, with snap. the drug, it's a horrible compound snap right. in her uh, leg. You know? The the you know compounding drug habit that had been going as well. You know, in the first one, the the girl was raised basically by somebody with mental health issues that was having a breakdown. Yeah, and was stuck alone basically in the house with her. See, th- and, that was even that was fucking more fascinating than our scenario here in the second well, one. Because, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say because it was a, wait the, to pile up on me over here because it was the fresh take on it. Now yeah. we're getting like the second part of that fresh take. And yeah, it's not going to be as fresh, but go ahead, Colonel. No, I'm not piling up on anybody here, Zach. I will. But that's, <laughs> I know you will. You're you're dirt, dirty motherfucker like that. But no, I mean, this is paranormal 101, man. I mean, it's just like watching a possession movie. The demons connect, always connect to the weakest person in the house. He connects to the weakest people. Yeah. It, 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 like I said, it's possession one-on-one, man. That's all. Yeah. I, I get what you're saying about, you know, I, I get what you're saying. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying if you look at that aspect, it's just I, how else are they going to go with it? You're right. And, and maybe that's my problem with this is I just, I had a little higher expectation for what this could be. And then they just kind of went with the, textbook fucking de- demonology stuff you know so i mean that maybe that's it i don't know all right well and like you said we get to the the scene with um there's a point in the movie where sky keeps getting text messages about hey were you at lewis's house the night he died and blah 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 and, and they keep coming over the course of a day or whatever finally she responds she meets up with this guy and uh, it happens to be the guy named Morris played by the great Peter Jacobson. Uh, now, not, not an actor whose name you're instantly going to recognize, but if you saw this guy, you've seen him in a hundred fucking things. And he, he's always, he's always solid. I always, I always enjoy this guy. Um, Colonel, let us know about that scene, you know, because Sky has to get in, you know, incognito under this big, yeah. huge jacket, mm-hmm. you know, and her ball cap. And, yeah, because you because know, you know, if I don't want anybody to pay attention to me, I'm going to enter a place like this, and when and when someone looks, I'm gonna be like, this isn't going to bring attention to myself, right? Yeah, of course. No, no, it's like, who the fuck is this? What are they trying to hide? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, she meets him, and she's. Flipping the fuck out, obviously, and I thought it was funny she took a picture of him. You know, play it safe. You don't know the guy. In case, in case you're a creep, I'm sending yeah. it to my friend. In case you're a creep. Uh, yeah, I just watched my drug dealer murder himself, but you might be a creep. Yeah, right. <laughs> but no, uh, no, it, it's a good scene, even though it's just, it, again, it's something we've seen in a million other movies. I mean, not even just horror, just film in general. Hey, I'm this guy that somehow becomes an expert because this thing killed my brother. So now I have an idea how I think we can stop it. And this is how we stop it. You know, it's just. It's a trope. Very much so. It's um, definitely a trope. I wouldn't say it was like one of the scenes of the movie where I'm like, oh, this is riveting. Like, oh, this is. It served its purpose to drive the story forward. Because even prior to this scene, like we're talking like. They spent an hour just on the first fucking day after she woke up in the morning, after she woke up, after dude killed himself. This movie mm-hmm. is way too fucking long. <laughs> like, yeah. So, I mean, technically we're still on, like, what, the first day? Well, second day. Maybe now. the second day, yeah. It was just... 
dragged on. But like I said, it was a good scene. I just and it, was, it served its purpose to drive the story forward. And this guy is a great character actor. Like mm -hmm. Crank said, I mean, he's one of those people you see his face, you don't know his name, but you know who the fuck he is. Yeah. Um, so it's a solid acted scene. I just again, it was just tropey, a little too tropey for me. Ziggy, your thoughts? Yeah, and uh, she's not too hip with the plan because it involves her being killed and revived. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, spoiler alert! Like I was trying to leave that. That's all right. I, <laughs> I didn't tell you how it happens. It's just that's the plan, dude. And uh, yeah. But you know, uh, but yeah, he's great. You know, he, he he's just, he, but he's so matter of fact. He's just, like, oh yeah, this is what we got to do. This is what I, you know, I think this will work. And uh, this is how stop it. And uh, again, uh, to me, this guy's fascinating because I'd like to follow him around for the next half hour of the movie and just listen, listen to him talk about what he learned. So we fucking know what this thing is. God damn it! All right, I gotta I gotta play these. Luke says a smile too poster. I just realized she's a South Park Canadian. <laughs> Grizzly, hey buddy, I now have that in here. I'm not your buddy, guy. Oh man, <laughs> I'm not your guy, buddy. I ain't your guy, buddy. Uh, I I will say this: when it comes to the writing, I think this is probably one of the weaker scenes because, like you guys both, like you mentioned. It is kind of that common trope. Like, here comes a stranger that knows everything about this demon that I have no idea about. And then, I'll be honest, one of the things that irritated me was the whole, like you mentioned, the whole Flatliners kind of tie back to it. Because <laughs> uh, he's, he's Clayton Duke. He's, uh, you know, you can name a dozen of these characters that show up. They know everything. Right. Creighton Duke. Creighton Duke. Creighton Duke. Peter Vincent. Cl Clayton Duke is the uh, the one you get from like Temu or Wish or something. Oh my god! Right? You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that I, I will say this was like the the weakest writing area. But I have a feeling it had to be. I bet I bet this part was rewritten because I bet this movie was two and a half hours long with the original idea probably and they needed oh, to trim just... it down and this is a way they were able to trim it down because this when i saw this scene this felt to me like ooh, this is like a third draft scene and i i could be wrong but it just uh, feels that way to me it's i just feel like you could have cut other stuff other than the scene you could have added more to it i think a lot of those scenes that were there to follow her descent well, I yeah. agree. Uh, I mean, it, it just, I just felt like I said, I just felt like they could have cut a little time elsewhere if that's what they had to do. Nice. Yeah, so she realizes that uh, the, the visions and the nightmares, wake or not, are hitting her at all times. And she realizes she has to work with this guy to try to figure this out. Well, and they, they established that in the first one as well, because if you go back and watch the first one, you know, a lot of it is outside of reality. Mm -hmm. And you have to figure out what, what is real and what is not. Uh, and they did the same thing with this one. And I thought they pulled it off fairly well. Not, and, not as well as the first one, though. I not mean, as well as the first one, no. But, I mean, they tried to have that same, you know, uh, big twist near the end. like, And we've kind of already alluded to it. It didn't really were quite as well, but I thought it was all right. Uh, Amber says, I agree with Ziggy on that point. I think the story of the first one is a wee bit stronger, especially the backstory of the main character. And then she goes on. Sky's backstory is pretty good too, but Rose from Smile One definitely had a more complex trauma story, which made her a little bit more tragic. Sure. I would agree with that. Yeah, I agree. And Tarek says, Pete Jacobson, Peter Jacobson rocks. He was so good in House MD. Absolutely. Uh, I just wanted to throw that up because I, I, I like House MD. Uh, of course I, of course <sighs> I would. Because it's a well written show. Of course I would. You're right. It's been years, man, but I, I can't remember if I ever finished it, but it is really good. 
I've seen uh, a couple episodes. That's about as far as I'll go. I mean, that, I've seen it's not something I've watched though. That final season does get a little. Is it wild? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it goes a little off the rails, but it, it's worth seeing. But, all right. Um. All right. We're there. I think. Let's get let's get into it. Spoiler alert! By the way. <laughs> oh yeah. Sure. All right. Well, officially <laughs> in advance. Officially in advance this time. How about that? We should have two spoiler alerts. One that's like, oh <laughs> sorry, oh sorry, we missed it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I know we're, we're Canadian. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. I'm sticking with the uh, the poster, you know, <laughs> buddy. Not your um, buddy guy. Not your buddy guy. <laughs> anyway, um, we the big twist, I think, near the end of this is that Gemma did not call her back, did not show up. And as was established in the first one, the demon can take the form, at least in the mind of the person there, can take the form of someone she knows and do things with them, talk with them. Gemma spends the night, makes tea, all, all this shit. Catching yeah. up. Yeah, catching up like they're old friends again after yeah. a year a year after being told to go fuck yourself. Go um, eat shit, you cunt. I think that's the exact word. No, that was one I will of them. Say, yeah. Real quick, that I really like that part where they showed her phone when she way back when she first texted her and it showed mm-hmm. those old texts of her like you fuck you, you cunt, blah blah blah, just showing the history. Right. Of like, oh yeah, they left off on a really bad note. Yeah, and yeah. but they don't explain it, which is fine. Yeah. And I like that. They show it. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was her because of her addictions. I mean I mean, yeah. You're right, they don't tell you, but I mean it lets you, you know, figure it out. Right. Anyway, uh, yeah. Colonel, would you would you uh, would you like about that twist or not like about that twist? It sounds like you didn't. Like it. It, it, I wouldn't say I hated it. I mean, like you said, it made sense as to why her acting was so fucking shitty, but it doesn't make up for the excuse that her acting was shitty. Um, <laughs> I just thought it was, she could have done better. <laughs> Damn it! Um, but you're right. That's like the one. We said like the first one hides reality from you know crazy quite a bit. This is the one where they pulled it off. I thought this is like easy to tell. Here's what's real, here's what's fucking fake. I kind of got a feeling once she was randomly there with the coffee, oh the truck's right over there. <laughs> um after we've seen probably the best kill in the movie, the best gore, even though it looked like they were putting paint blood on her blouse with Microsoft paint. That's a bitch for another time. Um, so uh, this turn, like I said, I kind of had a feeling and they just kind of confirmed it. So I wasn't necessarily shocked. But I'm like, it makes sense. Now it makes sense. Because um, like you said, the way they left off, I don't know about you guys, but say we had a Zag man and Zag had a falling out. And he's like, oh, go, go eat shit, you cunt. He called me. Uh, the last thing I want to do is be like, you need me to spend the night? So I was like, <laughs> Self. Don't talk to me. That's right. That's right. It's funny considering he just spent the night at your place. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah sorry. I'm thinking about the fuck you and the Microsoft <laughs> Paint comments. Sure. So, yeah. Um, again, kudos to them. They slightly tricked me. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Ziggy, what about you? I also was kind of suspicious when she showed up right there. And goes, hey, the car's right over here. And then, but it was very effective when you, you couldn't help but get a little bit of a hair raise when you see Gemma is on the phone. Gemma's mm-hmm. sitting right next to her. And then she gets the smile from Gemma, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, and it's like, oh, shit, you know. And so, yeah, definitely cool. It was a, a high moment of the movie. Um, kind of spoiling with a little bit. I'm gonna jump back in here. My whole, my favorite part of the whole scene, because there's a few times this movie did make me outright laugh. This is a very small spoiler. So we find out, like I said, it's not really Gemma; it's the demon. Sky's driving herself. Next thing you know, she's in Staten Island driving all crazy. Someone goes, "Hey, learn how to fucking drive!" Flipping her off the window. That was the third time I laughed. <laughs> that was it. Hey, it's New York. 
Não, não, é a Hey, hey. Um, yeah, I thought it was a good scene and played out pretty well. What about you, FaZe? I didn't think she was anywhere near as bad at, like, poorly acted as Colonel is letting out. But oh, that's again, fine. that's something well, I, I want to see. Thing, double check. But other than that, no, I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that little twist where she gets a text and then she looks over. That was fun. Then we get to <laughs> what I want to lovingly refer to as the old Pizza Hut scene. Yeah. That made me laugh. Really, I, dude, I cracked up. Honestly, because so Morris, the guy with all the answers, uh, <laughs> leases an abandoned Pizza Hut because it's the only thing on short notice that he could get that had a big enough freezer to be able to stop Sky's heart for long enough and uh, hopefully be able to revive her. And his plan is to... Yeah, sure. Jump in. Just real quick. No Pizza Hut has a freezer this fucking big. No. Ever. I've never even worked in a pizza joint. I know that too big of a fucking freezer. Bag did yours? I worked at a fucking motherfucking Pizza Hut. FaZe works at a motherfucking Pizza Hut. We had walk-ins, but nothing that fucking big. That is Not the quite biggest walk-in big. on the planet, dude. Like that, That's like a fucking bank safe. That was a morgue. Like a morgue. Yeah, or like a morgue. Yeah, like yeah. what the hell? There's I, no walk-in is that huge. But anyway. Sorry. Um nope. A bigger no, no no stop it. No. Fuck you. <laughs> no. We are supposed no. to I'm just gonna start throwing other shit up there. You won't be able to do it. <laughs> God damn it. No. You won't be able to <laughs> Gotcha. Fuck you. You can't do it. Didn't expect that one. <laughs> we are supposed. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. I'll do this all fucking night, asshole. <laughs> just fighting with the drops. You guys, my hands are up. Yeah, I'm just, these I'm two. Just anyway, effective scene. Uh, Ziggy, I'll start with you. R regardless of the size of the fucking freezer. Right, I was already kind of like, again, we, we established that this is kind of pretty basic demonology shit here. So I was just like, all right, let's, I mean, I, at this point, I'm like, let's just get this over with. So get at, so I don't know, dude, I wasn't overly impressed with it. I, I didn't think it was, you know. You just wanted to whip out a Bible and make it all Catholic and shit, didn't you? No, I don't even need that. I mean, yeah. but. That's episode three. I, I, <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's another thing. I mean, I, I do think a lot needs to be said and left re, re, unsaid until they see where they're going to go with it, man. Because it could be very interesting. Fair it enough. is true. They don't explain the demon at all. So I, I can understand your frustration there. If we're following like, the basic rule of it, though, three could be cool. Hmm. That okay. goes against uh, that goes against something, I think that you've said previously. Not tonight, but after you saw it, I'm happy I had a few days to think about it too. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, Colonel, or no, fa fuck you, Colonel. Uh, Phase, no, fuck you. No, fuck you. <laughs> Phase, uh, effective scene there in the freezer. I mean, I, I did enjoy it. I mean, once I got over the whole Pizza Hut thing, I. I'm just like, cool, it's the one Pizza Hut in the world with the freezer like this, which run down as hell, too, by the way. Again, it looked cool. Like, the building itself, like, all of the settings in this entire fucking movie were really good. The, the really yeah. old, shitty ones, like, fuck, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it was supposed to be really cold, and she did a really good job at looking cold, and, you know, they had the... You know, that smoke coming out of their mouth, you know, that I don't know what that's called, the condensation, but it's yeah. really cold. Yeah. But, you know, that, that was a nice effect. Just, I don't know, it, it was good. I I, I enjoyed the parts. I mean, I, I like the, the claustrophobia of it. The the doctor steps out. He's like, hang on, I got to go get something. And then, of that's course. Shit. And that's that. And then, of course, well, she's all well, alone. And that's after. When after he explains, oh, by the way, don't kick this block out from behind, you know, between the door and the jam because then you'll be stuck in here. 
Yeah. Right. The, 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 the freezer door, it lat- the latch is broken. So if it closes, we're, we're stuck in here. Right. Rodari told us, okay, it's going to fucking close. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Like they focused a lot on the latch. It's like, yep, okay. But no, it's just... It, it was good. It, it isolates her in this basically this cube, this frozen cube, and that had been horrible. Yeah, this giant could be four Pizza Huts with the supplies they could put in. I know the Let four Pizza Huts worth the freezer. Go. <laughs> it's okay. My it's my okay. thought was, did the lights work in the rest of the building? Do you remember? I don't know because that's my exact thought. I'm like, I wasn't okay, sure about the electricity there. I, I I gave that a break. Yeah, who's going to who's going to leave the power on an empty fucking building that's not rented to power a full a big ass freezer like that? I'm Dude, assuming that that to to the point. it's about the freezer. It's not about the lights. It's not about having electric. It's about that's a big fucking freezer. Yeah, I'm assuming that was part of this is enough. This is all the time I had to get to find something. That was part of it was getting the fucking power on and the freon refilled before she got there or something i don't okay. know just go right. with it right that, that's i went with it too just I, I i can go with that i can go with that colonel you good with that again i don't know we're making such a big deal about this fucking freezer i'm saying <laughs> horror movie you have to spend your disbelief uh, i understand it's a big freezer for a fucking pizza hut but why don't we talk about it for 10 fucking minutes yes i'm good with that let's move on Amber the pizza hut point. looked regular compared, just like we'll the get, one we'll I get used to that in a minute. Days. Would I you say the lobby was looked normal like yours? Oh, the lobby know. looked like the old eighties Pizza Hut for yeah. sure. You don't need a fucking walk in that big. I was, I was, in, I was, a, I was <laughs> see one of those red plastic uh, frosted glasses somewhere laying on the ground yeah. or something like that, and it was missing the X Men arcade game. Every Pizza Hut had, around here had the fucking X Men arcade game, dude. That's the best part about going to Pizza Hut. We had an arcade game, but I don't think it was the X Men. Hmm. I think ours was Turtles, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ninja Turtles Two. Yeah. yeah, that would make more sense for a pizza joint, honestly. No, the X Men game. What? Well, how would that make it? Oh, because they eat pizza. But the Turtles, they they eat pizza. Yeah, they eat pizza. <laughs> yes. <laughs> was it? Oh, oh was that makes sense. Here, Chuck E. Cheese is the one that had fucking Ninja Turtles. That's the one I remember. Oh, okay. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Cause, anyway, cause, so since we're talking Chuck about Chuck E. Cheese, the, had everything. Yeah, since we're talking about this scene and uh, how we thought about it, at this point, I'll be honest, in the movie, I was fucking done. I'm like, are we done? This has been too really? goddamn long. All right. Yeah, yeah I was like, here we are. Here's our fucking final battle. I have to concur. Thank you. All right. I, I will agree this movie's a little long. But I, I think, I mean, I could maybe trim like 20 minutes off, and that'd be about it. That's, that'd be that make a world of difference, I think. Yeah. All right, finale. Because this is basically the finale. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of the ending? Without giving it away. Colonel, uh, actual actual ending was. No, Colonel. Oh. No, I, no, I enjoyed the actual ending because. Makes really, it's a really good, makes perfect fucking sense. Like, if I was in the fucking demon shoes, that's the route I'd want to go because you're taking advantage of your fucking host the best way possible. Um, that was, I'm like, okay, I dig that. Which brings me to my first point that we made when we started talking about this. You know, part two, you got to raise the stakes, and this absolutely raises the stakes. I think. Yeah. No, of course. I'm just curious how they're going to pull this the fuck off. Uh, they're going to pick one or two, like two or three people in that crowd to follow. Maybe, yeah, maybe a maybe a set of friends. Yeah. See, I, I don't know. I'm thinking they're going <laughs> to. I think somebody's going to be watching coverage of New York City because we know New York's going to fuck going to go fucking nuts in about three days after that concert. Mm-hmm. And I think that's how it's going to get to somebody else. I just okay. think, to me, money wise, that makes the most sense. You can have all your chaos in one scene, and I guess now we have to explain it. Phase, you want to, or yeah, Ziggy, yeah. Ziggy, now Phase, you want to tell I'm them what the ending is? Gotta just go from where we pretty much yeah. left off, because yeah, well, it kind of cuts. 
it kind of cuts to a point there because we're still in the Pizza Hut there for a minute because she's she's all alone. She's no, I mean ju- jump to the concert, jump to the. Let me just jump to the concert. All right, yeah. fuck it. Well, how does she get out of the freezer? Do that at least. Oh, okay. No, well, she doesn't really. I mean, the, she wakes you know, up. The, the you know, uh, the demon that you know kind of looks like her from you know a few years ago. Fucking faces her and uh, like they have a standoff and can't remember if they fought much or not, but it basically ends with the demon telling her, like, none of this is real. And she kind of wakes up and she's in a concert. And like, she when she comes out of the show that they were showing earlier, like they were previewing this, like, you know, the showy, this very Lady Gaga-ish all the thing that she pops out of, all the smoke yeah. pops out, and all of a sudden she's in front of a crowd, gotta start singing. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, shit's not quite right. She, you know, she just starts a concert off normally, like, all right, I guess I'm here. I guess I'm doing this. This is, you know, whatever. But then, you know, the the demon gets, she hits the floor. And you can't you can remember, see. like, she ends up facing off against the whole demon and everything. Like, it yeah. rips her mouth open and shit. Like, and the crowd doesn't see any of this, just like how the drug dealer died and she couldn't see any of it. Right. She's just getting mauled and killed, but then after she's like, you know, quote unquote killed, she stands up, smiles at the crowd, smashes her face open with the microphone. Jams it in her eye. Jams it in her eye. Yeah. Right in front of the entire crowd. Cut the credits. Drops, drops dead. Tens drops of thousands dead. of people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, everybody's screaming. And it shows their perspective as Yeah. Uh, like it shows them, the crowd, as right. and then you just hear the face smash, the stage, smash, yeah. smash, smash. And then it cuts to her with the microphone like in her fucking eye. Now, granted, smile one, the demon opens up Rose's mouth and climbs inside, kind of like this one. But right, they did spend more time showing that this time, and it didn't look as great. I will admit, but look like shit. It was CGI ish, very much so. Right. We'll, now, we'll say the demon looked like shit. I did appreciate. Hold on. Am- Amber asked an interesting question. Mm-hmm. Was the Pizza Hut with the huge freezer even real, considering the ending? It's no. a good point because good point. the guy was like, I'll be right back. And he never mm-hmm. comes back. He's fucking he, gone. He fucked yeah. off. Well, no, well, even like Faye said, the demon told her none of this is real. Her mm-hmm. mom's not your mind. Right. It's all in her fucking mind. Yeah. So, right. Uh, but not, no, like Faye said, it's not real. Well, I, okay. Now I remember where I was at. So. While she's essentially choking, dying, where the demon's crawling in her mouth, is she going to see? So the demon looked like shit. It looked fucking awful. But I thought it was a really cool effect how the demon, because at first she saw herself with a smile, and then the demon started crawling out. I loved how she was getting ripped apart. And her body was like hanging down, like the fucking mm-hmm. Terminator 2, and still had the smile on its face. That, that half of the reveal was impressive. Like I said, the demon just looked like fucking shit, though. Yeah. Um, it's pretty similar to the original, but a little redder. <laughs> a little wetter and redder, and it, that doesn't look cool. No. And uh, I did have a gripe about the microphone in the eye. I've seen uh, Till Lindman bash his fucking forehead with a microphone a couple times at a Ramstein concert. I don't know how she'd be able to get that in her fucking eye and kill herself. I'm just I'm saying. Just- it was the other side. It wasn't like the. the it doesn't head matter. Side. I still don't know. I don't see. I don't see how it's possible. Man, she weighed about, yeah. about about ten and sucking wet. Man, Tarek says, producer, a Pizza Hut wouldn't have a freezer that big. Director, dream sequence. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much, and that could just be it. It's not real. It's not I'll real. It that. doesn't matter. All right. Uh, well, like I said, that ending could lead to if. It, an apocalypse style movie with hundreds and thousands of it people could. Right. Right. freaking it out and everybody. mass hysteria and murder. Oh, if there's, 20, if there's 20,000, 30,000 people in that auditorium and they're all cursed now. You want me to come back to see T, uh, Smile 3? This is where I would like to see it go. But I, I'm, I'd i lean more to what Crank said. It'll probably be a handful of people with problems in the crowd. Mm-hmm. We'll probably get like news stories about, you yeah. know, like in right. the background, almost uh, kind of like uh, just a- in the credits or something. Maybe we'll see multiple people get killed off in the credits, you know, leading up to. 
hey, here's three friends, you know, that went to the concert together and they're all locked up together and they're all in this hospital and blah, 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 blah. And they're <laughs> trying to survive or something like that. I, I don't know. But uh, Ziggy, when you first watched this, I want to bring up something you mentioned. You yeah. originally said the only way I would want to see a part three of this is through a prequel. Now it sounds like you're changing your mind. Well, now that they went ahead and did what this guy predicted when the first trailer dropped six months ago, I mean, right on the head, he goes, got a million bucks, says she kills herself on stage at the end. Hmm. And I was all like, fuck. But then seeing it and now going, oh, okay, potentially, in my mind, this could be like the sad, <coughs> you know, that kind of fucking violence and shit and mm -hmm. crazy, you know? So, I mean, that's got potential, <laughs> if you ask me. A, a, a prequel of the source of the demon? Yes, please. Even a short, animated, fuck something, man, would help with this. Hmm. But uh, I, I'm more inclined to see mass hysteria. Sure. <laughs> uh, Faze, if you were, if they were to make a three, where do you see it going? Oh, that is a good question. I mean. <sighs> I guess the more likely scenario would be the latching on to like one person or a group of people rather than the mass apocalypse. But God, I really don't know. They I guess it really depends. Anywhere. I guess it depends on how much money this thing makes. Twenty three million. That too. I mean, this could be it. And I could see this just being it. More than, I mean, that, that's almost my guess. It really depends on the budget. I was alone in this theater, so I don't feel like they, that this made a whole lot of money. No, uh, it didn't make a huge amount, but I mean, twenty three million. Yeah, like Ziggy okay. said, I think I think the original was a sleeper hit though, and ended up getting close to like two hundred sure. over its run last year. Uh, it's, producer twenty eight million to make it. This smile too. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Producer, look up. Can you look up what the bo was for uh, the original smile one? I'm going to show another one of Amber's uh, comments. Something to consider. The monster has only ever been ever been seen to be able to possess one person at a time. I have a feeling it's sort of invested on a large, yummy food supply. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I see. Dude, I the domestic was fucking $105 million. The worldwide yeah. was $217 million. Yeah. So the first one was a, a, a huge hit. Monster hit. Yeah. Uh, crazy. But again... Good fucking marketing. We already mentioned that. This one lacked good fucking marketing. You're not going to have the return audience like the people went and saw Smile several times last time. Right. Uh, just, yep. Good. And another one from Amber. If one of its targets escapes, it can just jump to the next one. Bunch of yummy proxies to enjoy for the next year. Yeah. I, that's kind of what I see. Uh, but I think it's going to focus on like maybe a group of friends that went to the concert together and now they're all infected, but the mom or one of the friends or the mom was out getting, getting drinks at the beginning of the show and was coming back and like, didn't see all that. So she's not infected. Mm -hmm. Somebody's not infected, but they got to take care of them. They got to be careful, man, because they could uh, kind of fall into that final destination territory, you know, mm -hmm. if it's too many yeah. people, you know, see, and it can, Let's go on with making an improvement on what Crank said. Let's be honest. Again, as a father of daughters, I see a mom actually going to the concert with the girls where dad's more likely to go and drop their kid off. Hey, I'll be waiting outside. Come find me after the show. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. uh, it's, it's a, there's a ball game on. Yeah. Uh, I got to watch, watch, yeah. watch the Bengals. They're up 7-6 at halftime. <laughs> hey, Siri. <laughs> no, don't. Don't, don't, know, do that. don't do it again. Uh, all right, let's rank it. Uh, you know what, Faze? I'll start with you on a on a rating. All right. I mean, I don't know, man. A lot of you guys seem to enjoy the first one over the second one, but I, I kind of, after watching them kind of back to back, even though I was drunk with Smile One, maybe I got to rewatch it. But I would rank Smile Two a little higher than Smile One personally. Hmm. That said, I don't know. I just I I really enjoyed that slow descent of Sky's character and 
the jump scares were nice. I enjoyed those. The CGI didn't bother me. The occasional bad acting clearly didn't bother me because I didn't notice it if it was even there to begin with. Oh, it's there. <laughs> everything. That's fair. I, I will be watching this again. I this is I walked out feeling like this is definitely a potential for a top five for the year. Depending on Damn. I mean, we're almost done with the year here, so I don't know, mm. but that's just me. I mean I want to give this an eight, a solid eight. Damn. All right. Colonel, where are you at on this one? Uh total opposite of phase, but that's okay. Like I said, I like I don't mind having a different opinion here. Um like I said, Naomi fucking killed it. I, I will give credit for that. She carried this fucking movie. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for her, I would probably rate this movie a hell of a lot, lot slower than I'm even going to. Um, ran a bit long. The CGI probably wouldn't have been bad if I hadn't just watched Terrifier 3 the week before. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that had a slight effect on it. Um, Fair enough. What CGI looked good, but the demon was just... That's almost unacceptable if you have a better... The larger budget, I should say, and that's the best you can come up with. Um, again, ran a bit long. I just was not as emotionally invested in this story. Like I said, towards the end, I'm like, okay, let's get this over with. Um, I did appreciate the almost the spinal tap shout out at the end with the pod. Um, but overall, it's still an enjoyable movie. I'm going to give it a better score than I would have yesterday. I'll give it a six and a half. All right. Uh, before I get to Ziggy, Brian says, I enjoyed Smile 2 more than the first one as well. So okay, there you go. A lot of that. Yeah, you're in a lot of that. And along with uh, what these guys have said, Tarek early, er, way earlier in the show said, can I just say, though, two hours and 15 minutes? I'm already tired of horror movies doing that. 90 minutes is perfect. Stop fucking with that. I agree 100%. This would have been a 9 if it was like an hour and 40, easily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Faze, go ahead. That, I, I did already. Yeah, here we did. It's sad. Ziggy. Or Ziggy, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I enjoyed the first one better. I, uh, yes, yes. We've seen this concept before, but this take was pretty cool. And th the marketing was brilliant. Um, and uh, again, I, I thought the, the characters in the first one had a bit deeper of a backstory and a little more pain paid out. You know what I mean? So coming to this one, I, I dig the concept, man. And I, I, I like taking it this way into this realm and she killed it. She's the perfect, she, you know, she got, she got it. The diva, she understood the role and, um, and, and, and tried to power through it and keep the face on the mask on even in the in spite of all this shit um the problem with this movie is the is the writing it it, it just gets very lazy and I, I hate saying it man i mean because it, it shouldn't be they, they had a chance to really take this somewhere and it could have really made it unique and they just went textbook a lot and um the payoff underwhelming for me with the end, aside from the actual ending with her killing in front of a wide audience like that. Gotcha. Um, but the pizza, uh, hut, the unbelievable pizza hut freezer. Yeah, I just went past it. I wasn't even going to bring it up again. Yeah. That freezer, it was. I unbelieve about that freezer. <laughs> I mean, totally. Um, it's worth a watch, man. If you're if you dug the first one, you'll pro you you're gonna get this. You know, like look at face. He gave it a fucking A, man. And it's it's I, I get that, but it's for me I expected a little bit more and a little bit more fleshing, man. Maybe a, a longer version of this will be better somehow. I don't know. Uh and here's hoping three is uh something fucking nuts. Raise the bar again. Maybe you'll get that uh eight from me next year. This time it's gonna be a six. Hmm. I'm going to keep it simple. Uh, I agree there are some writing flaws. I love the directing choices and the cinematography of this film. One other thing that we didn't talk about, the music yes. and the score are Loud. unsettling and amazing. So good. I think. Uh, I forgot all about that. Oh, my God. The, the score is incredible because... It's not even really, I wouldn't even call it music. It's just noises that, that fit. Uh, 
it's very it's very it it fits the movie well dude, in my opinion dude i'll even say during the credits the first set of credits at the mm -hmm. end was fucking really good yeah 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 um and the the moments of silence of just str of flat silence were well done but the way this guy shoots stuff uh, I really dig. So I'm looking forward to when he gets out of this world. But I think we're going to get a three at some point. Mm. Uh, I didn't I didn't like this as much as I liked the first one, but I still enjoyed it. Uh, I'm, I'm giving it a seven. Solid seven. So, so we got a six, six and a half, mm -hmm. eight and a seven. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Right in there, 6.75, 6.9, somewhere in there, probably average. Let's say 6.9 because it's funny. 6.9? You just want want to get the period out of there before you go diving in, though? Oh, sure. Why not? Okay. Okay. Yeah, sometimes the period makes it more fun. Oh, Dad, Jesus Christ. It's like getting waterboarded at the same time. With that said, um... <laughs> let's move on. Uh, oh, uh, actually, let me. Because Amber ranked it. She gave it a 10. Nine, or oh, 9 yeah. out of 10. No. Or no. She gave the original a 9. 9 out of 10. And Smile to an 8.5. So eight just eight. below. Nice. Thanks for our, uh, thanks for our <laughs> final final girls and guys. Uh, Christy, Faze, <laughs> Lorena. Girls. Yeah. Our final girls. Uh, Christy, Faze, Lorena, BD, Alex, and Robert. Our Crazy Ralphs, Bells, Fancy Creations, Dr. Smiley, whole, uh, Raymond, and the whole damn enchilada pod. And of course, our camp counselors, Adam, Corey, Christy, Luke, Jimmy and Rachel, Stacy Lynn, Orlando, Chuck, 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 Dave, Patricia, Kristen, and JJ.